First things first. President Obama's executive order dated March 6, 2014, clearly states that any person or organization that threatens the territorial integrity of Ukraine constitutes a threat to U.S. national security and foreign policy and will be subject to sanctions. It does beg the question in what way and why is the Ukraine considered a national security interest of the United States? It's a bit far from the U.S. owned borders. Second, the UN adopted a resolution reaffirming the UN's commitment to Ukraine's sovereignty, political independence, unity and territorial integrity within its internationally recognized borders. But according to a statement by UN Secretary General Ban Ki-moon, a group of legal experts working under the UN Security Council concluded that Ukraine has not been properly registered as a state, according to the UN's demarcation of its borders since the collapse of the Soviet Union. The experts noted that Ukraine still lies within the boundaries of the Soviet Union's administrative borders, over which the UN has no legal jurisdiction. The EU actually supported this position. This conclusion, to say the least, raises questions about the legal basis of Ukraine's borders and sovereignty. Russia established the terms of Ukraine's independence based on Ukraine's membership in the Commonwealth of Independent States, the CIS Treaty. Russia has treaty rights on the question of Ukraine's borders, regarding areas largely populated by ethnic Russians, including Crimea, Donbass, and northern Kazakhstan. The CIS Treaty recognized and respected each other's territorial integrity and the inviolability of existing borders within the Commonwealth, but conditional on Ukraine's full membership in the CIS. However, Ukraine did not sign or ratify the subsequent CIS Charter, which was agreed to in 1993, which means that Ukraine has never been a member of the CIS, having only the status of a founding state of the CIS. The Treaty of Friendship between Russia and Ukraine, signed in 1997, was intended to further cement the borders, with firm borders a necessary standard for Ukraine's recognition by the international community and any consideration of NATO membership. In September 2018, Ukraine announced its intention not to renew the treaty. The treaty consequently expired on the 31st of March 2019. In summary, it could be legally argued that the Ukraine does not in fact have established and ratified borders with Russia, Belarus and Moldova, the republics of the former Soviet Union, and the borders with other countries were inherited from the Soviet Border Guard Service. Imagine if you will, that Russia has international law on its side, and that the activities that the US and its allies has been conducting, with Ukraine as a proxy since 2014, are coming to light. We imagine that there is a whole bunch of corrupted individuals, with a lot to lose, that are now acting out in panic. Especially if it would emerge, perhaps a little later, that like a Russian babushka doll, many more layers are yet to emerge, stemming from the same corrupt criminal structure, acting in the background, a proxy within a proxy within a proxy. This is how they've always done it, to act, without being seen. So, COVID, election fraud, Ukraine, Nazis, money laundering, crypto scams, corrupt energy companies, the Bidens, the Clintons, Obama, the Bushes, Ericsson funding ISIS, failing economy, central bank digital currency. At this point, it's almost impossible to not see the corruption, even with your eyes closed. 